side of the plane for the for the actual tent attachment so that's going to be a fairly big job um, which you'll see some of that in the boat going on and off the trailer which is trying to work out where the height where the heights come to which it sort of wants the peak of the boat's about here so which means I've got to get the tent there and popping up with enough clearance there for the boat to come up and on. But, uh, yeah. Um, so our rooftop tent has arrived from the Sunshine Coast to Mackay. We went with the AX27, we think it is from memory, from the Bush Company. Um, obviously, because we're originally from the Sunshine Coast as well, so we were able to go uh, try it out, lay in it. It's, it's beautiful, so I'm really excited because it feels like the missing piece at the moment, the last missing piece. So uh, Shane has just started with building the uh, like support posts that are going to go on the boat trailer that will hold the frame which obviously have to hold a lot of weight by the time it's got the rooftop tent and the frame and us. Um, so I'll show you what we've been doing. So you've welded them onto the mud guards. The, what are these called? Mugguards, yeah. Yeah, mudguards. Yeah, they well, they also supports each other then. Yeah, it's all joined together. The mudguards need support if you jump on the hands. So that hold. They yeah. like support each other. Yeah, well, you, well, they support the mudguards. So you're putting a plate on the top of these then? Yeah, that. That. And that goes on the top of them. Hmm. And then, um, yeah, hopefully we have a leg. Here, ish, there, and then at the front, there, one of your four posts. Um, I hope I don't have enough room to put like a jerry can holder or something. Oh, down the back of them? Yeah, or on the back here or back there or something like that. More storage, the better. This is my life, having to work with these on because there's no table inside the house that we're staying at and I see Shane's grinding and stuff all the time, so put the air, air muffs on, air muffs. call them air muffs, put the airpods in there and where I go and I can get on with working. Alright, so today I'm starting on the train for the, uh, for the tent, this is definitely one of the more challenging parts and something I was not dreading but um, just didn't quite know how I'm going to put it together and I still don't really so um, you kind of have to sort of put it on and you know figure it out as you go I mean if you're better at drawing shit which as we know I'm not um, you probably make more sense of it on paper but yeah Anyway, so that's the frame so fast. This is what the tent's going to sit on. Front of the tent will be at this end. And the back of the tent down here. Um, it's all just tacked because I'm just going to sort of wing it and see where it ends up. So the biggest consideration is figuring out, um, you know, if I've got to pull the boat on from flat ground, how high it's going to pop up. So how high I can make the tent <clears throat> and how high the back has to go up and down to still clear it and kind of want to be able to use it you know when I'm not traveling it's just me on my own so without you know requiring two people I suppose so so this is what I've worked out for the first for the front part of the frame so that's sitting about a meter off the base so if you push the boat out on the flat so coming out it will foul on that but because it's so far forward it's it's on a pivot point so you can you can push it down pretty easily and it's not far you know if you're going to do that on your own it's easy to do you can sort of you can even just jostle the rope i suppose as you go so i, I think i like that then the plan is the front of that platform there is gonna basically just sit 
on here with a hinge at the back, so just a heavy duty hinge I can weld on. Um, so this is the easy end, this is just going to just lift straight up and down and I'll put an over centre latch on each side just to lock it while you're travelling. But that's where that'll sit, so that's pretty well right. Now I'm going to start on the back which is going to be the tricky part. So. Um, I'll put some more shit together and we'll have a little look and see what it looks like. So I've just started putting some um, hinges together for the back legs, so they're the ones that are going to have to go be sleeved and go up and down sort of thing. So this is the prototype anyway. So it's basically, basically just three bits of thick plate. Is in between and the bolt. Obviously, not that one, that's just to give us a, an idea of how it'll work. So that's 40, 40 to 40, which will sleeve inside the 50. So it should only really have to go to sort of that angle as the tent goes up, and then that'll fall back flush on the frame like that and lock in. too bad. I realise I probably should have just used the whole saw rather than cutting them out by hand, but yeah, I'll make the other ones and then um, I'll try. doing a little test run here to see how it all works and where to mark up the, the back legs. With a very stylish foot in the way. That's the back legs I'm talking about. <laughs> so that's essentially what it's going to look like. That's the hingy boys. Uh, this will obviously be sleeved inside of this one in that position. So I bought some um, they're like tray hinges for drop sides on trays, which I thought were going to be the go. But what seems to be happening is as this is going up on its sleeve, it's it's pushing the whole thing backwards, which I don't know. If I think it's, yeah, it's the hinge. It's, I think it's a bigger than it, really. It's the hinge as well as the sleeving design. So that being pushed backwards is then meaning that this, the internal sleeve is catching on the external and binding up. It's just on its way up. So. Just taking this one off to see if we can work out where there are different hinges that will Yeah, I think if I can get a hinge that will keep that in line, because these are kind of cocked off a bit. To allow for all oh, the way they work with the tray, I suppose. Like drop sides. But I went these because they're nice and heavy duty, but so we're going to need like a concealed hinge or a piano hinge or something that will sit in between. Alright, so latest update today. Um, it's pretty well spent the morning shortening the frame slightly. So. Dropped it down 50 mil just to make it all a little bit more stable. Uh, fully been the idea of the I lift it, the um, sleeves. So now it's just all stubby, all stubby boys, just to locate it. So we're not sleeving anymore. 
and so on. Mate. Yeah, mine is pretty good with this sort of shit. A bit more of an actual engineer than me. Um, that's what we decided. It would be strong enough. The sleeves are really just to hold it up and while it was up. And it wasn't actually going to give it any more um, strength or support, I suppose. So, yeah, we thought we'd just leave it on the leave it on the hinges that I've got it on. Which is fine now. It doesn't. Um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't foul or anything because it's literally just just hinging. It doesn't have any sleeves to catch on, so it can go wherever it wants. Um, but yeah, we decided to lower it down just a touch, just to give it a you know, bit more base, I suppose, and make it a little bit stronger. Um, we just added in there the cross braces on the sides, so again, that's just going to strengthen the whole thing. Uh, what I'm doing now, everything's just tacked like it's not no full welds or anything. But what I'm doing now is just going to make up some gussets for here and the other side. Uh, I'll do some plate gussets for the, for the feet, so just trying to stop all the, the vibration, I guess that's what's going to kill it and the movement this way, um, yeah, side to side, it should be bloody strong enough the other way. And then what I'm thinking, this was talking to my mate about as well, was um, while we're travelling, sort of, cross bracing, sort of temporary cross bracing, so what we thought was um, like a chain, ratchet chain, chain and dog sort of style. Um, and looking at it now that I've got the bows on, what I'm thinking of doing is, I've put the motor on to make sure it's all going to work, but these handles poke out of the covers, so I'm thinking I'll, I'll get a chain across here, make a bit of an X on the back and then on the front, so when we're travelling and doing those rough rows, you can just ratchet that up and uh, and that'll hold it all nice and tight. So, yeah, but um, goal for the rest of the day is to actually get the tent mounted, um, which I think should be achievable, but got a bit of hustling to do, so I've still got to do all the latches and stuff like that, and fully bowl and everything, so we'll do some gussets, and then um, yeah, I'll come back to you and see where we're at. tent on. It's probably a little premature but that was the goal for today so you know, it's nice to tick things off. I uh, just got to do a little bit more welding, a bit more grinding, put all that back together. It's unboxing time! Then, yeah, we'll do a little unboxing on the on the tent. Ooh, it's... Whoa!
Thanks for watching. We'll be releasing new videos every Friday at 5 p.m. Australian Easter Standard Time, so make sure to click the subscribe button so you never miss a video. If you've got any questions about the build, I'm sure Shane would be happy to answer them. Just drop us a comment. And if you did like this video in particular, make sure to click the like button.